in fifth grade. Today we're going to be doing module four, lesson 17, and we are now multiplying decimals. So if you know how to read a decimal, then you can easily do this lesson. And if you know how to multiply fractions, then you can also easily do this lesson. We're kind of bringing everything together now. So we're going to be taking a look at this first problem. We are going to look at this. We're not going to say 0 0.1. Remember, way back when, how we read fractions. So this two is in the tenths place, this three is in the hundreds, and this four is in the thousands. So when I take a look at this number right here, I read it as one, and I take a look at what place value it's in, it's one tenth. Now if I were to think about what one tenth looks like as a fraction, this makes this problem seem a little less difficult. So what I can think about is if I were to write one tenth as a fraction, it would look something like this. So one tenth. And then I could just multiply that number by 4, because this is just 4 ones, so we're going to leave that one alone. The only numbers that we're going to change into fractions are the ones that look like these decimals. So now I'm left with 1 tenth times 4. And this should be a problem that we know how to solve, because I can just go straight across. So to start with, I'm going to do 1 times 4, which gives me 4. And then I do 10 times that invisible number 1 which gives me 10, which leaves me with 4 tenths as my final answer. Now, I can also simplify this, and I think about, well, what can I divide 4 by? Well, I can divide 4 by 1, 2, and 4. And then I have to look at the other number and think about, can I divide 10 by 1, 2, or 4? Well, the biggest number I can divide that by is 2, so I'm going to do 4 divided by 2 and 10 divided by 2. And that gives me two-fifths for my final answer. So all we did for this problem is we changed our decimals into fractions, multiplied them like we know how to multiply fractions, and then I get my final answer. And that's all we need to do for these. Now, for this problem over here, what I am left with is 0 0.1 times 2. So for this problem, what I can do is I can again write 0 0.1 as 1 tenth times 2. And then, again, this is just like the problem we just did. We do 1 times 2, which gives 2. And then 10 times that invisible number 1, which gives me 2. Now, another way that I can look at my answers is I can think of this, if I want to write it as a fraction or as a decimal, I can think of this number as two tenths. Just like how I thought of this as one tenth, I can look at this as two tenths. And I should be able to write two tenths as a decimal. So I think about if I have two tenths, then that means that that two needs to be in the tenths place. So I put my decimal right here, and then I'll fill in a zero, just so my number looks um, good. And I'm left with two tenths as my final answer. Now I could also, if I want to simplify, I could think of two tenths as one fifth as well. Um, so let's take a look at this problem over here now. And this one's a little bit different, but not too much. I have 0 0.001 or one hundredth, because it's in my hundredth place, as you can see. So I'm going to write one hundredth as a fraction, and then I'm going to multiply that number by six. Remember, I'm not going to change six ones into a fraction because it's just six wholes. So there's nothing um, to do with it. And when I go from there, I'm left with one, um, one times six, which gives me six. And then 100 times that invisible 1, which gives me 100. Now, this is why we might want to write our answers as decimals, because if I had to simplify 6 hundredths, that might be a little bit difficult for me to do. So when I say that number 6 hundredths, what I want to think about then is I want that 6 in my hundredths place. So what do I need to put around this number so that it is in the hundredths place? So I know I have to put a zero then in my tenths, a decimal here so that I have 0 0.06, so six is in my hundredths, zero is in my tenths, there's a decimal, and then I could also put that zero in my ones place to show my final answer of six hundredths. 
Now this number right here and this number right here are the exact same numbers, but I'm writing it as a decimal instead. So we're going to take a look at a next set of problems, and we're now going to be multiplying des or decimals by decimals. So we just did decimals by whole numbers, but what if we were to take something like one tenth times one tenth? What would that then look like? Well, just like we've been doing, we're going to rewrite these decimals as fractions. And you'll even see at the very bottom of your notes, I wrote out what each of these decimals should look like as um, fractions. So if I have 0 0.1 or 1 tenth, I write that as 1 over 10 times, and then again I have this 1 tenth, so I'll write that as a fraction as well, which leaves me with 1 tenth as well. Then I just need to multiply going straight across, so I do 1 times 1, which is 1, and then 10 times 10, which gives me 100. If you don't remember how to do these, it's just 1 times 1, we get that 1, and then I have these two zeros that I tack on, which gives me 100th. Now, when I take a look at this problem, I don't sometimes want to leave my answer as a fraction. So what I can do is that I can think about, well, what does one hundredth look like as a fraction or as a decimal? So if I have one in my hundredth place, then I need a zero in my tenths. I need a decimal point, and then I can also write a zero in my ones. And this is how I'd write my final answer as a decimal. Remember, one hundredth written as a fraction and 100 written as a decimal are exactly the same. It's just sometimes you might want your answer written like this instead of this. Let's take a look at this next problem. So for B, we have now 2 tenths times 1 tenth. So we're now kind of changing up our numbers just a little bit. So I can write 2 tenths like that and 1 tenth just like that this and the only thing that's really changing now is instead of having just ones everywhere ones and zeros now we can just have um twos and so on so um just because there's a two here doesn't change anything though we can still write it as two over ten so i'm going to multiply going straight across two times one is two and then we have ten times ten which gives me one hundred now, I'm going to show you another quick trick to help you um, figure out how many decimal points you need to go past. When I look at the problem with the decimals, I can underline how many decimal places I see. So I see I have one decimal place here, and I have one decimal place here. So what that tells me is my answer should be two decimal places in. So... I have two hundredths as my answer. So what that means is that this two should be in the hundredths place. This zero will be in my tenths. I'll have a decimal right here and then a zero right here in my ones place. And just like I told you, we have one, two decimal places. And right here, I have one, two decimal places. So that's just a quick trick to help you either check your answers or just figure out how many decimal places you need to write your answer in. So we're going to do one more problem for this section, and now we're going to be, this might seem a little bit tricky, but we're going to be solving for 1 and 2 tenths times 1 tenth. So for this problem, I don't want you to get too confused either by this. I can always think of this not as 1 and 2 tenths, but I can just think of it as 12 tenths. I can think about, well, if this decimal wasn't here, then what number would this look like? Well, it would look like the number 12. So what I can do instead is I can just write this as 12 tenths, just like that, and multiply it by 1 tenth, and then solve from there. And again, we could kind of use that quick trick. I see that I have two decimal places, so my answer should have two decimal places as well. So we're going to do 12 times 1, which is 12, and 10 times 10, which gives me 100. And that gives me an answer of 12 
hundredths, but remember we don't want to keep it as a fraction right now. I want to see my answer as a decimal. So if I have 12 hundredths, and I know I have to be two decimal places out, I'm going to write 12 and make sure that this last digit is in the hundredths place. Because if I have 12 hundredths, that means my last digit, which is 2 in this case, needs to be in the hundredths place. So we have hundredths, tenths, decimal place, and then my ones, which gives me my final answer, 0 0.12 or 12 hundredths. And you may remember decomposing way back from module 2, and that is how we got this 12 tenths right here. But remember, whenever you see a problem that looks like this, you can still change it into a fraction. You first just think about what does this number look like if the decimal place wasn't there, and then what's the last place value, which in this case is tenths, so that's why I put that 10 there, and the 12 is up there. Let's flip over to the back side of your paper now. We're going to work on a few more problems together. And for this next set of problems, we're going to be taking some bigger decimals, or decimals with different place values, and seeing what happens. So right here, I have one in my tenths place. So I have one tenth times... This one is in the hundredths place, so now I have one hundredth. And for this problem, all I need to do is just go straight across and multiply. So one times one is one, and ten times one hundred is going to give me one thousand, because I have one times one, which is one, and then I have one, two, three zeros, and that's why I have that answer of one thousand. Now, I want to rewrite this as a um, decimal, so I'm going to take a look at how many decimal places should I have. Well, I have one, two over here, and a third one over here, so I should be three decimal places out. So one, two, three. And since my number is one thousand, I want to make sure that this one is in my thousands place, and then I fill in from there. So then the zero should be in my hundredths. This zero is in my tenths, and then I need a decimal point, and I can also add a zero in my ones place to show that my final answer is one thousandth. So let's try this next one, which is very similar to this. It's just that we are changing one tenth to five tenths. And you might even know what we need to do from here. Again, my answer should be three place values in, or decimal um, points in, and then we're going to take this 5 tenths, and we're going to write it as a fraction, so we have 5 tenths times 100. And going straight across and multiplying, we're going to do 5 times 1, which is 5, and then 10 times 100, which also again equals 1 thousandth. But now what I have, instead of just 1 thousandth, I have five thousandths. But this doesn't really change up anything too much. So what I'm going to do is I look at how many decimal places I should have. So I have one, two, three. So I'm going to be three decimal places out. And then I should have a five in my thousands place. So I put that there. Since I don't have any other digits, I'm going to fill all these empty spaces with zeros. So I have a zero in my hundredths, a zero in my tenths, and my decimal place, and then a zero in my ones place to give me my final answer in decimal form as five thousandths. Now, if I were to change this up just a little bit more, what I could do is I could have one and five tenths times one hundredth. So hopefully you remember from the previous problems um, what I can do with this 1.5. I don't just have to write it as one and five tenths. I can write it as 15 tenths. Because remember, I can take a look at this number. What does it look like without the decimal? And that's the number you could write in your numerator. And then take a look at what is that last decimal place. Well, my last decimal place in this number right here is my tenths. So that's why I write 10 at the bottom. Then I need to multiply again by 100. And then solve from there. So I have 15 times 1, which is just 15. 
and then I have 10 times 1,000 or 100, which gives me 1,000. So now I have 15 thousandths. I can check how many decimal places I should be out. I should be one, two, three decimal places out. And then I can start writing my answer. Um, since I have 15 thousands, I should have five in my thousands place. This one will then be put into my hundredths, but I still have empty place values. So I'm gonna put a zero in my tenths. And then I need a decimal here and a zero in my uh, ones place. And this is the decimal form of my answer, 15 thousands. So now we're going to try with different digits. So instead of just working with all these easy ones, now we're going to have 7 times 0 0.2 or 2 tenths, because this 2 is in the tenths place. So I'm going to rewrite this with that fraction. So if I have 2 tenths, I'm going to write 2 tenths just like this. And then, just like any other um, multiplying fractions problem we've done, we just go straight across. So, we're going to have 7 times 2, which gives me 14. And then, the invisible number 1 times 10, which gives me 10. Now, I don't really like this answer because it is an improper fraction, so I'm going to change that. So, I'm going to write 14 divided by 10, just like this. Then I figure out how many times does 10 go into 14? That's just once. 10 times 1 is 10. I subtract, and that leaves me with 1 and 4 tenths. But I also can do it a different way. So what I can also do is when I take a look at this, I can think about, well, if this is 14 tenths. Just like that problem before, when I have 1.5, I wrote that as... 15 tenths like this. So what's stopping me from doing it the other way? If I have 14 tenths, what I can do is I see in my problem, well, I just need to be one place value out. So if I'm just one decimal place out, then this four should be in my tenths place. There's going to be a decimal. And then since I need to write the number 14, I'll put this one but that's going to be in my ones place. And now I'm showing you 14 tenths or one and four tenths, just like we did up here. So those are a couple of different ways that we can solve these types of problems. So let's try one, another one that's kind of similar to this. So we're gonna be solving for seven tenths now times two tenths. So to write seven tenths, I just write that as seven over 10 times 2 over 10, or 7 tenths times 2 tenths. And then going straight across, I multiply. So 7 times 2 gives me 14, and 10 times 10 gives me 100, which leaves me with 14 hundredths as my final answer, but I want to write it as a fraction. So I see that I have one, two decimal places, so that means that my answer should have two decimal places as well. So if I have 14 hundredths, I need to have that four in the hundredths place, and then this one would be in my tenths place then, which means that I'll have a decimal place right here, and that will leave me a 0 0.14 or 14 hundredths as my final answer. We're going to do one last problem together, and then you'll be ready to move on to the problem set. And this one is very similar to the ones that we have been doing. So now we have 0 0.07 or 7 hundredths times 2 tenths. So for this one, I'm still always going to write my decimals as fractions. So we have 7 over 100 times 2 over 10. Remember, writing this as 7 over 100 because this is 7 hundredths because the 7 is in the hundredths place now, not the tenths. Then going straight across, we will multiply. So 7 times 2 is 14. And 100 times 10 gives me 1,000. Then I need to write this as a decimal. So again, I can look back at my problem and see how many decimal places should I be out. So I have 1, 2, 3 decimal places. So if my answer is 14 thousandths, this 4 
needs to be in my thousands place, which means that this one will be in my hundredths, but I still have an empty place value, so I'm gonna fill that with a zero, so I have zero tenths, and then I need that decimal there, and I can put a zero in my ones place as well, which leaves me with my final answer in decimal form as 14 thousandths. So, nothing too bad here. All you're doing is taking decimals, making them fractions, and then multiplying and changing them back into decimals. So you know how to do most of these skills. It's just putting all of them back together now. So you're going to be moving on to the problem set. If you need any help, please let me know, and good job today, fifth grades.